I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to Unashamed. It's unusual because I, I don't know what to do with re- having Jace right here on, on my right hand. Jace is uh, on the road. We've sent him out to get some stories. Uh, Jace, can you hear us from wherever you Tell us where you are. Oh, I can hear you. I'm in Virginia. I'm on uh, a river that is absolutely stunning. It's on the other side where I'm looking. Clear water or I would water? tell you. Oh, no, it's clear. It looks awesome. I would tell you the name of it, but I, I haven't figured out how to pronounce it yet. It starts with an M. I'm in Virginia. We'll we'll start filming here as soon as we end this. I got all these uh, tech nerds looking around <laughs> from the TV show. They got me set up here. <laughs> They're all just off camera, right, waiting for something to go wrong. Yeah. Tech nerds, is that, a ter- but, is that an endearment term? Absolutely. Yeah, I love I love these guys. I mean, look, they may be weird, but when you need one, they're uh, they're handy. Yeah. If you go one of us goes on the road, you got to have a tech nerd somewhere. I've never met an individual who was uh uh deep into the the, the virtual world and no uh, and and I've never met one that was normal. All of them are weird. <laughs> <laughs> that little black box will make you be weird. <laughs> and this comes yeah, from and this comes from the man who's the picture of normalcy, right? That's hey, I'm, that's it. <laughs> so normal, so normal. It seems I'm normal. That's right. You know what I'm, you oh, see yeah. what I'm saying? I know. I know. In your mind, that's the way you see. Normalcy it. Is, is 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 a is a scarce thing, and when you see it, it scares you. You're not used, used to it. That's true. You do have a look about you, Dad. So we also got Zach from uh, North Carolina. Zach, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, so I, um, I had to cut out on the last overtime segment. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, no. They've done, we've <laughs> sent technicians, speaking of technicians, Jace, the nerd crowd, there's another group of individuals who drive around and pick up trucks, and they got like a barrel of, of deadly poison in the back of their truck, and they go around and uh, it it's for wasp. This is a scatter gun for wasp. Uh, do not shoot in your face or your eyes. That makes sense. But this is a wasp killer. The the bug man came down yesterday after the episode, and I'll fight with the with the uh, wasp. And he looked in the back, and in that wall there, he said he never seen anything like it. It was just big purple tail wasp with hundreds of wasps on it. Then right beneath that, yellow jackets, then another. It was just solid wasp, that whole wall. And it was a little crack. And they were coming from the outside, getting in the lights, getting above us, then getting on us. Yeah. And you suffered You suffered the... I suffered the... Finally the, had to get the technicians down I suffered down the here. blow. So just to, to remind... Kill them all. Just to remind the audience, so the last two podcasts... We were dealing with wasps, and we said we're everybody's their heads on a swivel. We're trying to, you know, we're just trying to do some good here. Read the Bible, share some good news, and then we're into overtime. Zach, you 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 had had to leave, so we're in our overtime segment, which is another reason why you want to have overtime because it was epic. I was attacked by a wasp and stung right on the fleshy part of the neck. You know, the nice tender part that you don't want to get any kind of injury there. Is it possible that these wasps were agents of wrath? (laughs) They were yesterday. (laughs) (laughs) Well, now you got to, I mean, you got to see the segment, but I mean, so we're, we're watching the segment back a few minutes ago. Yeah. Right uh, before we came home. Yeah. And uh, it's just, (laughs) Yeah, Phil, Phil turned, instantly turned the experience of Al being stung by a wasp into a hellfire and brimstone sermon, and it just kept coming. I mean, it was just like scripture after scripture. I was like, I, I, man, that was an incredible pivot. I mean, that really was. What was so funny about it was I, I was living it in real time, but watching it again, I didn't even realize Dad was talking, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and listen, it was a pretty good sermon, Dad, about the sting of, sting yeah. of sin is death and the agents of wrath. Well, he had the frogs thrown at the king to hit. And he had the, the grasshoppers, which we're getting into 
what we got into yesterday. Yep. I mean, the, the king had to fight the greatest grasshoppers, and yep. you know, we're in we're wall. All these years later, we got walls just, just zero and in. They hurt when they when they sting yeah, it. Yeah, they hurt. They hurt. They, no, they, well, Jace, well, what, was, what, what were you I, thinking, Jace? I, I was going to say that. A podcast is is a conversation. We're we're having a conversation about Jesus and the Bible, and then all of a sudden, it turned into an attack, a lot of pain, <laughs> revenge, That's counterattack. Right. Because I went, I thought, well, one thing's for sure: that Walsh has got to die. Agreed. I mean, we, there, a lesson must be taught here. <laughs> And so I went out because of my brother's pain and sought revenge. So it turned into a little mini series on when walls attack. <laughs> and it's and it's and it's all recorded. That's the that's the best part about it. We got the whole thing. You know, most most podcasts out there would probably say let's like let's not show that, but we want here another uh, Shane. Want you to see the the real thing. So we're. We're, we're talking about should we put this in front of uh, where either, everybody can see us. So we're gonna. The goal will be that to make this as widely available as possible, so that it's, you can see and experience Al's pain. It's must. Goal. It's must see TV. I mean, we, there's all kinds of critters to, uh, down in here where we live. I mean, we have coral snakes, one of the most dangerous snakes there is on the planet. True. Cottonmouth moskins, rattlesnakes, uh, brown recluse spiders. Yeah. Black widows. Yeah. What's the other one that crawled around in a yard of another another copperhead? Copperhead. Copper, copperhead. And then you that's that. Then you get to the brown recluse and it just works its way up. The, the things that can hurt you, uh, ground yellow jackets. But these were just like wasp of all two or three different species of wasp. They've been after us for about oh how long? We've been swatting them for a while. Well, a year probably. It came off to and a, on. it came to a climax there yesterday with with that stinger. It was embedded in your neck. <laughs> My theory is is that as it's getting cooler, we got a lot of lights in here, so they were drawn to this heat and light, and so it was bringing them out. But I always thought there was just a one nest in there. I didn't realize we had like a. When the stinging started, I was watching you swatting and trying to get them off of you. <clears throat> But I did notice that in your eyes there was fear <laughs> or dread or something. Well, it's panic is what it is because you're trying to – you got something after you. And so the instincts take over like I was moving so fast. So they had to slow it down just to see what all happened, the, the yeah. camera guys, to tell me. so. Well, what's interesting is it. we started off reading about this this guy who had an evil spirit. And his son, you know, he was going into convulsions and he was foaming at the mouth. Foaming at the and mouth. <laughs> been thrown into the fire and, and water. And then all of a sudden, at the end of the episode, Al, I mean, you went into a convulsion. And once you got stung, I thought, if foam starts coming out of his mouth, I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. Well, you bring up an interesting point, Jay, because, like, it's been a few years since I got zapped. And you wonder, do you develop, you know, I, I've never known to have been allergic, but then again, I got a lot of allergies. So I thought, you're right. What if the tongue gets thick? You start seizing up. I mean, who knows what could happen? Yeah. A wall stink well, to it the neck, actually, that's, that's painful. Yeah. Oh, it hurt. Oh, yeah. It, it made me think on the way home. I thought, I mean, did that guy really have an evil spirit or was he allergic to wasp? Because, you know, I've seen people do, <laughs> I've seen people jump out of deer stands before because they were going to get stung by a wasp. I mean, but it's, well, it's what's better so amazing just to go ahead is and take it. To dad's, to dad's sermon, now that I've heard it uh, again, you know, a wasp is such a little thing. Oh yeah, but he packs a wallop. You he know? really does. I mean, that stinger. He he's got something going on. I mean, the Almighty gave him quite the defense mechanism. But the, the, they were in full attack mode. We're just sitting here talking about the Bible. I was actually into a really good point in Romans three, and was in, in the in the process of reading, explaining this what we were talking about here. So this this little tiny creature uh, wreaked havoc. I think he, he I don't think you up. ever finished your point. 
Well, I, I sort of did, but then I was like you said, as I was, I got into wrath mode myself. You killed yeah, you the one, derailed. which I appreciate that. I, my little brother sticking up for he killed I, I, that. I, one. I feel like, yeah, but Phil brought it. I think he brought it home as, as you're being stung, and he's preaching over you and <laughs> prophesying over you as you're being attacked, and he's and he's just speaking the word of God, saturating you in the word of God. I thought, what, plus, what a loving father. Plus, when what wasp, a loving father. When wasp are attacking and stinging mode. Whether it be ground, you know, these ground bumblebees, they live in the ground. They just a horde of them comes out. If you run over with a tractor, or just walk over them. Yeah, they're they like just, hornets. They're yeah. coming out of the ground. Yeah. And I mean, it, they have a real, it really hurts. Well, you know, Dan sent me a, because Dan came in, because Dan watched us and said, Dan, you got to get somebody down here. We, we, got a, we got a problem now. I mean, we're getting yeah. stung. You know, we've got a problem. So he, he got the guy down, like you said. They've yep. killed everything. I have, my head's still on a swivel, but I don't see anything. But Dan sent me a note, Dan, and said, I feel your pain because of Bumblebee. So what happened? Tell that story. Oh, I just looked out there, and I thought he was showing out to me. I was looking at him from about 100 yards away, and I saw him running just like you did. But he was running, <laughs> and look. I couldn't see all the, the ground yellow jackets, but they were after him. <laughs> so he was being stung repeatedly, and he was just swatting. Well, when I first saw it, I thought he was just showing out and going to show me some kind of hula dance because <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was jumping and waving his arms. And I thought, that old Dan, he got a personality. But then I got to notice got a first I said, you know, he may be in a bind. So I pulled over there and hollered, and he ran a, another 100 yards. I said, Dan, what you got? He said, these ground yellow jackets. He's, he, these ground yellow jackets are stung me all over. Oh, he had like, like a lot of sting. Mm. You know, sometimes, you know, you can get stung enough. It's but uh, Well, the problem is with Dan. I thought it was a joke, but but when I saw what was going on, I said, good. Dan right? has a lot of exposure, too, because he likes wearing the shirts with no sleeves, and then he never wears a hat. So there's a lot of white. When target. we clean out our duck blinds every year and, and get rid of the wasp, they're, they're a major player because we're fixing to brush the duck blind. After, it's been sitting there for months. You know, and the backwater come up, that's perfect for wasp. They're on a floating duck blind. And all in the corners, you know, they're big wasp nests. Oh, yeah. So you have to go through there, get all that before you try to brush it because you get them stirred up, and they'll run you to the next parish. <laughs> the last time. Well, si, si, si ahead, famously Jim. tells the story that, you know, the reason he has no rear end at this stage of his life is because him and Phil were crossing a fence and there was a wasp nest there. And as I, I bolted, a b piece of the barbed wire ripped his his pants right in the center. Now he it was his revealing pants when he, he when he started running, yeah, and and, and his underwear <laughs> were white, which was white, yeah. And I was a, and a then, little faster than he was, so I'm running. <laughs> he's behind me, but the bumblebees, their ground bumblebees, they were just going after that white, and his buttocks had twenty seven because my mama counted them. He got back, his tail was twice as big as it usually was. And my mama got in there and she said, he wasn't, she, I don't know what she got, vinegar or something. <laughs> they had some kind of, you know. She said, you've got just his tail was just, I mean, just about 25 or 30 different places where the, they stung him. Oh, it was painful on his part. He was hollering, but I was just running ahead of him. And he was too, <laughs> he was slow. So they were hitting him. They were yeah. right running us. <laughs> Woo. So much, I remember so much it like no it was yesterday, but we were about 15 years old, so it was rough. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Just to our audience, just to let you know, some places where you live, you know, there's a lot of poisonous snakes and there's a lot of spiders and, and various uh, species of wall. We have them all down in Louisiana. So. Well, once again, I'm thinking that the Unashamed podcast is unique. I don't know how many host a podcast have been stung by a wasp on set while recording but it happened here yesterday so we're, we're figuring out the best way to show that to you guys so be, be on the lookout for that it was pretty interesting let's take a break so you know uh we talk a lot on the podcast about pro-life and of course lisa and i 
and basically dedicated most of our ministry that we do around the country uh, to the pro-life cause. Uh, most of our speeches support pregnancy centers or right to life groups. And uh, so we've met a lot of the the major players in the pro-life movement. And there's some amazing servants and dedicated people that are just given everything for the movement. And we love that. One of the groups that we've met along the way uh, that also sponsors our podcast is 40 Days for Life. And uh, we've had Sean, who's their CEO. He's been on our podcast before. Tremendous man, tremendous group uh, that really just dedicated um, everything to being able to save babies and to help women uh, make better choices. So they've got over a million volunteers in a thousand cities. They hold peaceful vigils where they pray outside abortion facilities, mainly just for good decisions, not this attack mode. The idea is we want to pray for God's will to work. And so they're having some uh, major advances in some of the blue states that they're still having a lot of abortion. So we love these guys and want to support them. Uh, check out their locations uh, in case you want to volunteer, be a part of what they're doing. They have a great podcast. They have a free magazine at 40daysforlife.com. That's going to keep you updated on the pro-life movement and really showing how we're winning some hearts and minds in, in post-row America. Because the work really is just beginning because we've got a lot of people, abortion-minded people that need help. So go to 4040daysforlife.com and check them out. I feel like we need um, we, we need to, to put the call out. We need a a sponsor, an anchor sponsor <laughs> that can provide the best pest control on the planet. Yep. Like we need to, fi- we need to figure out who, who is that? And that company needs to contact us <laughs> and they, and we need to work a deal. If you can get rid of the pest. Just that are in our, in the lair right here in, just in the lair. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. We're not, we're not going out in the land. We're not going out anywhere. We're just saying just in this one area, if we can find the right partnership, complete protection with complete your product. protection, I feel like we would be able to sell that. And I think the unashamed nation would get behind whatever company has the, who, whoever has the technology <laughs> that can protect the unashamed podcast. I, 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 I think there needs to that's be that guy's marketing hat on now. He's already, bur- he's working it. So yep. I see his yeah, mind I'm turning as he goes. This is anchor. Well, we're in the book of Mark <clears throat> is, uh, I was so rudely interrupted yesterday by the wasp. Uh, we were finishing up um, Mark chapter nine. By the way, is there any kind of treatment that you use? Because a lot of people, you know, you know, put a little it, snuff on it sometimes. That's what I did yesterday. So, so our our engineer over here, uh, I didn't realize he was a snuff dipper, but I'm glad he was because I went over and rubbed some on that sting, and it immediately took the worst of the bite out of it. it was, well, there you go. It was it was throbbing a little bit, but it does work. It worked for me yesterday. Most so. of the time, that was the treatment around out here. Somebody gets stung, you put a little tobacco on it, and everybody's happy. Yeah, because every time I had been stung before, I was dipping or chewing myself when I was younger, but I hadn't, I hadn't dipped or chewed in a, a few years. But I was glad to have some on set. That was nice. Good work, uh, engineer. Well, based on what I read on those two miracles, you should have had him spit the snuff on the sting and see (laughs) how that worked. That probably would have been better, but it's just how you were moving so fast, your limbs, everything on you was 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 moving. I mean, (laughs) you were just like this, just like I mean, was I like a man beating the air? I don't know what the audience thought when they first saw it. Is that nobody? That that whole bunch about half nuts. (laughs) But, you know, go a wasp in their midst, and then you'll see them run, too. <laughs> you just got hit one time? Is that Was it just one lick? I thought I got stung twice, but I only found one the welt today, so I guess it was just the once. It felt like yesterday he got hit twice. But I, I, what lucky. I'm interested to see is that I, I wonder where he came out. I think he, he went all the way down and came out the bottom of my shirt. I noticed you were trying oh, yeah, to. yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I was trying he, to he crush him. He came out from the bottom. Yeah. yeah, so that was pretty interesting, but. Yeah. Somebody said Dan put the he said the where the wasp came in that they put you guys fixed that right with with the he universal fix du- he, with duct tape right gorilla tape yeah duct tape that's what he went with but if somebody out there in in Bugland uh, can keep a place safe from wasp brown recluses and first one thing or another if they had some kind of uh, they need to they need to send us some money and we will <laughs> yeah. allow them. 
to make money, and we'll show them what happens without it. Oh, boy. Well, it's, it's funny because we're, we're profiting, we're profiting well, off of my – this is we, worse we than are, Job's friend. And I feel like we're joking about this. Like uh, one of our, our producers just sent me a text. Like, seriously, she said, seriously, we, we, we need – we need to get someone to sponsor us. And I was like, yeah. I wasn't kidding. I wasn't kidding. Like, I know we're just, but seriously, like if you know, like, I mean, what better relationship to get into if you could, you, we could sell something that we fully believe in. We've experienced the pain. Al, you would be, I think this is maybe your, your calling right I'm here. starting to feel we like Job. To. This is like Zophar and Bildad, you know? Uh, I mean, the, my, my calamity is immediately be turned into a profiteering for the, uh, for the masses. Well, and the thing is, it never, it would never run out because we, I mean, this has been a consistent problem since we've started this podcast. Would we all agree to that? I mean, this isn't yeah. the first, I mean, it may have been the first all, all out attack. If you had a small little limb right now mm-hmm. for the next three or four days, just a little bitty switch. And if you eased in behind Al and just barely touched him on the neck <laughs> with just a little limb, you wouldn't believe how he would react. <laughs> He would come out of that chair like, wait a minute. I mean, he, 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 once you get dope popped, boy, I tell yeah, you, you. I know. You're right. My head's on a swivel today. <laughs> I'm glad you brought no, the song brought down up, here. Al brought up a good Wait. point, though. When you when somebody has something happen to them, it's like Job and his friends. You all try to assess where it all went wrong because yeah. Phil's first <laughs> yeah. response is first was, words. If you had a longer beard, that wouldn't happen to you. <laughs> I mean, how do you even you think of it? Tremor. Yeah. You've got step about one, two or three inches of whiskers to go blame. through here. Yeah. But it needs to be uh, long to protect your chest area. Well, yesterday, it's funny because the reason Dad said that is we were chasing one yesterday, and, and Jace, Jay started every time in between we were trying to record. Yeah, one was in my whiskers. He got he landed in Dad's whiskers, and so I, I was about to swat him in the whiskers, and the thing took off. But Jace would just clear out. At first, he kind of fought with us the first segment, and then after that, every break, I'd look up, he was gone. He just left Dad and I. Just oh yeah. Sw- what, what what y'all need? What y'all need to do is you got to take with the where the duct tape was at. You got to get in there with some spray foam. That's another sponsor. We need mm-hmm. you get in there with spray foam. You put your little. It's got a little straw. You stick it in that hole, and it just whoo, and it fills it up. Yeah, they're yeah. not getting in. You got to find the cracks and the crevices, and well, you got to yeah. find the area of entry. Some of these people that, that are on top, off. yeah, on the, some of the some of these products, you know, just now's the time to move. <laughs> <laughs> We're paying if you come Jay, through. Jay's what happened? Jay, we this thing has just turned into co- e-commerce. It's, a, it's an <laughs> infomercial. I'm, I'm telling you, this is what happens when you go from narrative to action adventure. <laughs> <laughs> well, it happened in a flash yesterday because there were some serious actions. So I think the audience can tell you weren't you weren't joking. Oh, no, it, it was real. I can tell you that. I'm no actor. I would hate to have to act that one out because that was a that was all instinct. All right, let's get back to Mark. This is enough frivolity at my expense. Um, but in the book of Mark yesterday, I mean the last two podcasts, we were talking about kind of closing out this concept with the evil spirit that we were talking about. And then there's kind of this, I don't know, like misunderstanding consistently of the disciples so Jesus is trying to get him to this point. So he, cl- he closes out, was the last thing we talked about yesterday. He closed out this section. He still had the child that was there with him. And so he was using that illustration to say, you don't want to cause this child to sin. And then he goes into your own sinfulness and kind of how you enter into this kingdom life that we talked about. And he used some very graphic illustrations to show that. And then, Jace, you talked about that idea of saltiness. Uh, at the end of the segment, uh, which you referred back to the Beatitudes, the idea that we're supposed to impact. And how do you have impact once, if you lose your saltiness, you know, what, what good are you going to be to the kingdom? So it was kind of the, kind of the way to close out that section. Well, I think he was trying to, for them to get their identity in how they're going to be ambassadors. I mean, later on, we know what happens in that we have the Holy Spirit in us and, we're pointing people to the king, and God uses us. It's his power. But that us being salt, you know, I mean, salt is, is something that you, you don't think is very important. 
because the main dish is the main dish, which, you know, Jesus is the main dish. But he, I think he was trying to get them to see the identity and their purpose. And salt, being salty means it's got to be used. This is, we're going forward. We're not just digging a hole and waiting for this all to end. But when you do that, and when we read the passage, the parallel passage in Matthew on the Sermon of the Mount, he told them that they were going to be blessed. Of course, I think he was using the physical blessings more in a spiritual context about brothers and sisters and homes and family. But he, he added, and persecution. Because I really think that was the thrust at what he was getting at here. This I'm, I'm going away. You're going to have to rely on faith and trust in who I am. And people are not going to like what you have to say. And that's still going on to this day. That, but it is interesting. He said, have salt in yourselves and be at peace with each other. But if you look at that worldwide and go way back in history, bring it to modern day, that thing about peace with each other, I mean, just look at our culture. We divide up and just devour each other all on and on and on. You see what I'm saying? Well, when you think about it, Dad, it's let's take a break. I think we can all agree that one of the, the scourges uh, of all time, but especially in modern era, uh, that Satan has used to destroy so many so many men and women, but especially men, is pornography. Um, you know, when I was a kid, you know, you, it shows up, but it's used in some magazine or some other form. Now, of course, with the Internet, it's everywhere. And uh, younger and younger uh, boys, mostly, but also girls, unfortunately, um, are finding it. And uh, and it's really scarring them and, and turning their lives into something they don't want. So uh, we've got a group called Covenant Eyes uh, that has been around for over 22 years, uh, helping people get to a porn-free life. And, and nobody likes being trapped there and what it does to you. It helps not only you, uh, but also your family. And makes gives your faith a, a stronger uh, help without this. So we want you to check them out. You can go uh, try. You can try Covenant Eyes free for thirty days. That's a free thirty day trial if you sign up today with the promo code Phil. So you got nothing to lose but a lot to gain. Here's what you do: you visit coveyes dot com slash Phil. That's C O V E Y E S. Coveyes dot com slash Phil. Check them out. Free thirty day trial and get pornography out of your life. If you think about it, salt is not just for flavor. That's part of it. But salt is also a preserver. You know, yeah. throughout all of ancient times up to today, salt preserves. It, it takes that it takes that which would, would spoil quickly and preserves it going forward. And so to your point, that's exactly what we're talking about here. We're, this is something, the, the preservation of this mindset and this the kingdom life is, is something that's much broader. And I think that the components I, 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 of salt. I think in the middle of all that, and the other thing that stood out to me as we're going through these various miracles and, and talking to Jesus, he said, he said, what must I do to, eat, to inherit eternal life? And uh, he said, good teacher, good teacher. What must I do? That's over in chapter 10. But he says, why do you, Jesus said, why do you call me good? And this is a scary statement, but I see it, I, I mean, as absolute fact. But a lot of what people on planet Earth would differ. No one is good except God alone. No one is good but God. He's yeah. saying, I'm sin free. Right. I am the epitome of good. Right. But if, if you miss that... Because you look around and say, well, I know some pretty good, pretty good people. But when it gets right down to it, that rich young man said, I've done all these things you, you're talking about. I've done every one of them. He said, well, sell everything you got. Right. Follow me. So there you go. Right. When, and you talked about peace. I mean, part of that's peace with each other. But part of that's your own peace of mind. And that's recognizing you can't do it. Yep. You know, on your own. Um, well, he's, he starts. Well, I want to say this. Go ahead, uh, go ahead Jeff. You know, that part where he says, uh, you'll be salted with fire. And when you read another parallel passage, you know, like 1 Corinthians 3, when verse 5, where it says, 
what after all is Apollos and what is Paul only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. That's why I was using that reference as in our purpose, salt being salty. And when you read Matthew five thirteen through 16, but it says, I planted the seed, Paulus water, but God made it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one. <clears throat> The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they'll each be rewarded. For we are co-workers in God's service. We're God's field, God's building. And by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, because we know the foundation is Jesus, verse 11. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus is Jesus Christ. Now here's the point I want to make. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, stones, wood, hay, straw, their work will be shown what it is because the day will bring it to the light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what he has built survives, the builder will receive a award. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss. So you see my point. That's where I, that's why I thought of that yeah. identity and purpose because it's like he's trying to train them not only on what God is like and His character, and but he's going away. He knows the plan that he's going to die and be buried and raised, and they're seeing all this. But he also knows that once they the Spirit is poured out, they'll have the Holy Spirit. They're going to go through all this as God's co workers. And the persecutions are going to come, and th- these hardships are going to—they're going to test your work. I mean, it's going to test you to the max. Even where ultimately they all gave their life in service to the work of Christ. No, I agree, Jason. And which is interesting you brought that up because <clears throat> remember we were talking about this section, and he kept talking about the end of the kingdom of God, and we've talked about this a lot when we were studying this book. Is that talking about? kingdom here? Is that talking about heaven? Because, you know, he has a reference of hell. So the kind of the assumption is this is all afterlife type type things. But when you think about it, there's a lot of context for this life, which is what you're describing. And it's interesting that he took that out of the context where he said, the worm does not die, the fire is not quenched, meaning an ongoing fire. And then he comes right back and says, everyone will be salted with fire. To your point, I think what he's saying is, is that you're going to face difficulty because of sin. Because remember, this context of the section is talking about sin. So sin is still prevalent. So you're going to have things that's going to happen that you have yep. to deal with. It may not even be your sin. It may be someone else's sin. But there's going to be fire that's going to come your way and test you. The question is, will you preserve? And that's kind of this concept, I think, of the saltiness. Will you preserve during this time of testing and fire and the things that happen to you? So I think yeah, that's what he you, means. Could- but. Yeah, because when you think about to, for salt to lose its its saltiness, I mean, you think about like what? How does that even happen? And you know, I'm not a scientist, but I know one way that it can lose its saltiness is is if you water it down, you know, and dilute it. Um, and so I think there's this idea that that that's what ha- or or you change its composition to something that it's not anymore, and is it, it, you you're not who you were. And I think that's the temptation. Whenever you're under trial of any any in any uh, capacity, when you're under a trial or tribulation, whether it be your own sin, whether it be persecution coming at you, whatever it is, the temptation is 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 to compromise. The temptation is to is to water it down, to dilute it, to like oh well, to to, to uh, compromise and just and make it something that's not. And I think that's the that's the point that that Jesus is getting at here. Like you have to like. To be in the kingdom is to remain in the vine, is to remain connected, you know, to in the vine to Jesus. I mean, it's 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 to be in His presence. It's actually the, it's a transformation that increases over time. Doesn't it? Doesn't decrease. You know, but when the Bible talks about predestination, uh, it talks about us being predestined to be conformed into the image of the Son. So that that's what that's what believers are are are, are ultimately moving toward is is being conformed into the image of the sun. So that's, that's saltiness. The yeah. opposite of that would be to fade away, to compromise, to move away from being uh, conformed into his image. And I think that's the idea 
uh, of, of what's happening here. Don't, don't water yourself down. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. No, I, I agree. And, and I think that, um, this net, when he gets to chapter 10, we have another sort of pivot, um, in terms of what, you know, what he's been teaching up until the last couple of chapters, it's been stories about the disciples kind of missing the point and him continuing to have to just, you know, tell them over and over and over again. Now we're going to re-enter the Pharisees back into the mix here, as well as a young man that dad's already referenced. And I think in this next section, the chapter 10 is sort of the idea. Now he's going to bring this idea that somehow law can save you back into play. I mean, that this is what kind of these next couple of stories are going to be dealing with. I don't read this first section because this is a much debated, much, uh, maligned in some cases, a section of scripture that leads to a much larger discussion, even in modern day churches and, you know, di- different scenarios. So I want to read this, these hey, first, uh, be- yeah. Before you read it, Al, I just wanted to make one last comment about the salt thing. You know, a- another verse that popped in my head, because cause we're fixed to get into this argument about the law, but is Colossians 4, I mean, it's the same context in verse three, you know, Paul said, "Pray that the that God may open a door for our message, so that we can proclaim the mystery of of Christ." Mm-hmm. And verse five, it says, "Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders, making the most of opportunity, every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know mm-hmm. how to answer everyone." Which goes back to my point. I think he was talking about purpose. But that salt used as seasoning, you think, well, we we preach grace. But there is an underlying principle out there that judgment day is coming, and there's a a real hell, and and fire will reveal what's important. You know, I've said that before in my life. Anything that can be burned up was probably not real important because at the end of the day, you know, God is – changing us from the inside out and because we have the spirit of god the same spirit that raised jesus from the dead ultimately the the final any kind of fire would not be able to harm us you know but i just think it's interesting when you look at that that he doesn't want us to be i think zach said watering down but he doesn't want us to be luke Luke lukewarm yeah, he doesn't want you to be scared <clears throat> to be bold for Jesus. I mean, God has called us to move forward. That's why, you know, in the in the last podcast, I said he's he's our shield around us. You don't you don't need a shield if you're not going into battle. If you're just, you know, who is that that said? Uh, I think it was. Am I actually fixed to try to quote Roseanne Barr off the top of my head? I think I am. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Let's go for it. Let's go for I it. I think she said. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Let me Hang look on. this up so I, so I get Hang this on. right. <laughs> We're going to have to take a break on that one, so we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> well, I know that. Uh, we're all super excited. Uh, probably Jason missed it the most because uh, they've become really good friends with the chosen folks, Dallas Jenkins and all their crew. Uh, season three uh, is coming, and uh, we're super excited about that. And the chosen season three begins in theaters on November 18th, which is super exciting. Um, the theme is called Come to Me, All You Who Are Weary and Heavy Burden, and I Will Give You Rest. That's from Matthew chapter 11, uh, verse 28. It's going to pick up right where season two left off. But uh, the way they put it is that we're turning up the heat. And, you know, if you study it in Matthew, you know, this is it's starting to come down to it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, enemies of Jesus, a lot of trouble, a lot of tension. And in all this um, upheaval, Jesus is going to talk about giving us rest. So uh, you're going to love it. Episodes one and two will begin in theaters on November 18th. Uh, and episodes will start releasing for free in the chosen app before Christmas. So if you want to check it out and you want to get some more information, uh, go to thechosentickets.com. That's thechosentickets.com and enjoy this fantastic series uh, that's really helping, I think, all people really see who Jesus is and who his followers were. <laughs> but that's what makes this good, right? You, you, you tease it up. I mean, like you were in mid thought 
And but whatever you're going to say now, Jace, it's going to carry ten times the weight just because we have we've built just it because up it's Rose Bar. Okay, yeah, no, I, I found nothing. the quote. I oh found boy, the quote. found it. So look. I don't know why this popped in my head. Jace, but you should you, leave with a, this. Jace, you should leave. The great theologian, Roseanne Barr, says. All right, well, hang on. I'm going to say this. If you are a son or daughter of the Almighty, a child of the King, the, in, in the full armor of God on this earth, you never want to be like the great philosopher and theologian Roseanne Barr, who once said, I'm so amazing. And if I ever get off this couch, I'll be unstoppable. (laughs) (laughs) That's actually a pretty good good quote right there. (laughs) Yeah. That is I don't know why that popped. Mind. I hadn't heard that quote in 20 years, but I remember seeing that somewhere. And I thought, you talk about yep. plucking out of thin air. That was pretty impressive. But, that was but good, to Roseanne, to the great theologian Roseanne's point, you know, you're, so what you're talking about, Jace, is urgency. There's a there's an urgency when it comes to the gospel and salvation, and sort of the ultimate doom that we know is coming if you if you don't get this right. So out of that urgency, of course, we should be seizing. I mean, what, is that not what this podcast is all about? You know, the hard part. Well, the reason is I get, getting off the couch. <laughs> well, right, exactly. and the reason I'm making such a big deal about this identity and purpose is because I think here you have in Mark ten, you 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 have a distraction and an argument brought about by religious leaders to Jesus. I mean, Jesus came here not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom. Many, he's been on a mission. He's working tirelessly. I mean, all hours of the night, he's training the ones that are going to follow him. He's doing all this. And so we're supposed to be doing the same thing, but how many times are we distracted by these arguments over religious things that don't mean a hill of beans or, or misunderstood and which is really what this is, What's fixed to happen here? And look, not only that, the disciples themselves are having all these arguments about who's the greatest yep. and who's going to sit on the right hand and the left. And it just, you, you just, we, we just can't help it. We we want to sit around in chairs and talk about, you know, where it all went wrong and while there's work to do. And I think he makes it clear, we're the salt of the earth, be salty, which means get off the couch and go out there. Into- which, which is a lot, which, which I think a lot of these uh, tertiary issues that we fight about that aren't primary to the gospel, um, those are luxuries that we can afford when we're not being persecuted. And when you know, you think about, uh, I think, what was the guy's name? Witcher, Richard, Richard Wormbrandt. Um, I think that was his name, but the Voice of the Martyrs book they sent out, Tortured for Christ. I remember reading that in college and. And uh, it's been a while since I read it, but this guy was being persecuted. He's part of the underground church in Russia where there were 20 million people killed. I don't know how many, a lot of them are Christians. I mean, they just, I mean, we're talking about just an assault on the church. And one of the things he said in the book was how he, how just shocked he was when, when he was able to experience Western Christianity for the first time. He's, I was just shocked at the things that you guys fight over. He said, you, you know, we have bits and pieces of the book of Mark. You know, we'd have a we'd have a page of Mark and we would circulate it around. We didn't have we didn't have the whole Bible. So we just have pieces of the Bible. And he said, we had we had the story of Jesus that we held on to. And he's like, man, when you're like being persecuted like that, it's just funny how brothers like those issues. We don't, we're not talking about that stuff. And I just thought, man, how convicting for someone in the underground church to come and tell us that, because I, not not that not that these theological Things they, they do mad, doctrine matters, all that matters. We're not saying that, but man, we hunker down on this stuff and we'll get so twisted up in the weeds on eschatology, you know, uh, or whatever it is that we're and we're battling these things out. I'm like, man, can you imagine though if, if, if you were in an underground church like in Russia or China right now or or the Middle East and you're literally you cannot publicly profess your faith and you're hiding out in homes and things like that? Like when you find someone that says they believe in Jesus, you're just like, oh my gosh, are you serious? Like an instant bond, instant family, instant loyalty. 
and I, I think that that's that's important uh, for us to think about as pointing. I, that's to me, that's the essence of that spirit is the essence of true saltiness. That's what it would look like, and like in, in, well, in the you got to remember in lieu of all of this, and when we mention law. You said, I'm no of the gods before me. Don't don't make bow down to idols. In other words, don't misuse my name. Remember the Sabbath. Uh, honor your father. And, and now just listen to these principles, laws. Uh, honor your father and mother. There's no argument with that. It, it is a great thing. The one who wrote it is saying, that's who's good. The one that does that. It, 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 they shall not murder. Well, good grief. I mean, we know good and well that that is a great principle, a law. Don't commit adultery. It's, there's a downside, the diseases and all of that and the broken homes. Hang on, uh, Matt, hang on, let's take our last break. Don't steal, don't lie, and don't covet. Well, if you look at all those laws, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the law, but it does prove to us that there's a lot wrong with us, every last one of us. And I think Jesus is making the point there that it's not the law. I've solved the problem, and I can save you by grace because if I leave you just you and the law, the law is not the problem. We're the problem. I just think that that's, well, that's what, what he's I was trying gonna... to <laughs> yeah, I was going to say before Al reads this that you just don't, it doesn't say this, but though you can tell the Pharisees are not really concerned with making the world full of happy marriages and how we can That's right. no. influence society. It, it, it's That's not right. coming from that spirit, even though even today the stats bear out that people who are married for longer than five years – have way less a chance of getting divorced and they have better health and point. they have better that, finances and their kids are, they flourish more. I mean, if you go look at the stats, God's design and his way are proven as yeah, fact it, that it is that the is best correct. way to, mm -hmm. to attain his law. existence. Yeah. That's right. His, his, yeah, his law is not, it, it's not oppressive. I, I, there's a verse in, um, the psalmist says this in Psalm 16, verse 6, that the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I thought, wow, how often do we, we want to we want to get rid of the boundary lines because we think that that's limiting our freedom. But I love how the psalmist says it. He they're says too that strict. the boundary lines, they're too strict. And we don't really, the, but this is what the psalmist got, right? The boundary lines to my life, <laughs> the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Th these boundaries that God has put in our lives, these are for our flourishment, not to steal and rob us of any type of joy or happiness. That was uh, the original sin in the, in, in the Garden of Eden. That that was the temptation that Satan laid out was that yep. God doesn't want what's best for you. God does. He knows that if you eat this fruit, so he's put this boundary here around this one tree. That's a boundary line. Well, you know why he put that there. And they're like, why? He's like, because he doesn't want you to be like him. I mean, Satan, Satan just put that. He sowed that. That, that is the, that's the seed of distrust that Satan always sows in our hearts. And, and when we sense because we're buying into that and somehow we're believing that God is holding out on us. And if and that is not the God that created us. God withholds no good things for us. I think that's also in Psalm 16 that, that right here. I say to you, Lord, you are you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. God does not hold anything good from his creatures, nothing. He is lavishing life on us. And I think that's the road, by the way, to sanctification and progressive healing and I, in Christ is yep. understanding that. And I do think that's the lead in to, to this text. That's exactly, we've already touched on what his point is. But let me read it. That way we can talk about the end here and then also a little bit in overtime. It's uh, verse one, Mark 10. Jesus then left that place and went into the region of Judea and across the Jordan. So from a remember, this is uh, Mark does a lot of his the, his book through geography. So now we're heading down towards Jerusalem. So now we're going to get into more of the establishment that's going on again. Crowds of people came to him and as was his custom, he taught them. 
Now we're going to see more Pharisees because he's in their region. Verse two, some Pharisees came and tested him. And we're going to get this a lot the rest of the way by asking, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Yep. There's the question. And Jay said, it's really not from a good hearted place that they're asking. Jesus says in verse three, what did Moses command you? He replied, they said Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. And we'll talk more about that, what that means. Verse five, it was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law, Jesus replied. But at the beginning of creation, and he's going to go all the way back to Genesis two. Yep. God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. And look how we've butchered something that's very plain. Very simple. He made, in the beginning, a male and a female. There is a difference. <laughs> yep. But look at what they're doing now. It's insane. To that text. So let me read the last couple. And so when they, verse 10, when they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. Here they are, the, the tail wagging the dog again. He answered, anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. So he gives them a little more insight into what, what goes on here by what they were distorting from the very beginning. Um, so what's your initial thoughts? we got a couple of minutes here before we wrap up the uh, um, well, I, I was going to say, uh, you know, they asked him a question based on Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 4. And you can read that. I think you should read it because I think that's what they were basing their trap on, which basically just says if a man marries a woman who becomes displeasing to him because he finds something indecent about her and he writes her a certificate of divorce, gives it to her and sends her from his house. And if she leaves his house, she becomes the wife of another man, and her second husband dislikes her and writes her certificate of divorce, gives it to her, and sends her from his house, or if he does. Then her husband, who divorced her, is not allowed to marry her again after she has been defiled. Y'all got all that? That yep. would be detestable in the eyes of the Lord. Do not bring sin up. up Upon the land the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance. But the reason I wanted to bring that up is because they're they're trying to build a trap based on something happening because they didn't two people, a man and a woman, didn't trust God in the marriage. And so then he goes back to what really marriage is, which I think is the the awesome point, which is God designed it. He defined it, and he gives you the context for it. And so what we we pull out of that is that marriage is designed by God as permanent. It's, it's permanent as in for your whole life. It's exclusive. It's you and, you know, it's one man, one woman for life. It's a covenant. It's an actual contract that produces freedom. It's actually more safe because it's then not based on feeling, you know, how you feel. You, you're you basically making a, a promise, an oath. And so uh, that's kind of my take on it. No, and I'm, I'm glad you read the Deuteronomy 24 because it shows you there was a – Moses had a very specific circumstance in mind here with what was going on in terms of marriage and divorce in Israel at this time that he was making amends to be able to protect both people, but especially the woman, which is a big part of this context. So uh, all that matters because when you go fast forward to the Pharisees, they just laid out a general question. They didn't deal with the specifics of, of Deuteronomy 24. They just threw out the big question. What, what do you think about divorce? And so Jesus brilliantly, as he always does, took them back to the beginning past what was going on in this situation in Deuteronomy to the ultimate, which is what you were saying, that is the good. I mean, yep. this is the right way. This was the God way that, that he laid that yeah. out. So. Um, yeah, and I think that you got to keep in mind, too, like the, this is a trap. I mean, this questioning is a trap Correct. for Jesus. So his answer, you got to interpret it in that context. And two, 
you got to think about what is the heart of the Pharisee, particularly at least these Pharisees and, and how they were operating inside of kind of this idea of divorce. And, and, and it was, it became something that was, they, they, they had left the heart of the issue. That was, that's the whole point. Jesus is going to get that here is like, Correct. you're looking at this strictly from a legal perspective and you're thinking, technically I gave a, a, her a certificate of divorce and now I can go do the thing I want to do, which is maybe marry another woman. And, and so you got this, he's like, you, 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 your paradigm is completely off. I mean, that's really what he's saying here. You're like the, uh, you're trying to trap me, but what's in your, your attempt to trap me, you're actually exposing your legalism. But and even I'm then, int- <clears throat> even then his grace would be sufficient. If you came to him and you said, okay, this is my sixth one. This is my eighth woman that I've been married to. So I'm out automatically based on what I read about what he said right here. No, you can repent. Right. Which and, we're, and which God we're, can forgive you. Which we're going to get into that in Demorium Death. We'll do that some in the overtime and, and see where we go from there. So we're, we're out of time. If you want to follow us over, it's blazetv.com slash unashamed. Uh, there's currently a, a promotion going on. You can get $10 off a uh, subscription if you, if you use the offer code uh, fill when you do that. So if you want to follow us over for overtime, check it out. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.